Casey Ferris here. I make videos on DaVinci Resolve here on YouTube. Today we're talking about color inside of Fusion and why the heck we would use a color corrector instead of just moving on over to the color page. When we would do that versus doing something else and uh, I don't know, maybe when you would pack a sandwich instead of spaghetti. I don't know, maybe for camping. I'm not mad, I'm excited, let's go. Here I am in Resolve 17 and we have a little comp going here. Let's take a look, shall we? We got our uh, screen replace TV going. This is actually came in looking like this. And what we've done so far is taken a piece of video and tracked it to the TV, given a little blur and merged it over our other footage. This looks pretty good, but ideally we're gonna want to adjust the colors separately for this screen than the rest of the footage. And so you might think to yourself, okay, if I need to do color, maybe I'll just go to the color page in Resolve. And for the most part, you would be right. And if we have this comp in our timeline here, we could certainly bring it into color and we could do all of the fancy things. You know, we could do our color correct it and all of that kind of stuff here in the color page. But of course there's a problem. We can do color here in the color page, but it affects the entire clip. What if we just want to color correct this TV? If this were a normal clip, we could select this TV with a window and track it. And that's how we would isolate the screen, which we could do here but there's not a whole lot of reason to do that because we already have this split up into different images in the fusion page. And so if we want to adjust the TV separately, that's where a color corrector node inside of the fusion page comes in. So here in fusion, we have our screen separate and we can color correct this separately from our background just by going to our nodes, grabbing this color corrector node and dragging it down in between our blur and our merge because that's just going to color correct everything after we track it and blur it and all that kind of stuff. And now whatever we do here will just happen to the TV. Although there is one thing that we want to do just to make sure things work nicely. Let's select the color corrector node and go up here to options make sure to click pre-divide post multiply. What that's gonna do is if you have a shape that isn't just a nice rectangle and it has a little bit of skew to it, it's gonna make sure that it only color corrects where your image actually lives, like only right here. If you don't have this selected, it can do weird stuff. So make sure to select that. So now we have our screen separate from the rest of our footage. And this becomes really handy for something like a screen replacement, because to make a screen replacement look at all real, you do have to adjust the colors of whatever you're putting on the TV to kind of match the rest of the footage. Again, this is something that you could do in the color page, but why? Why would you make more work for yourself? And one of my favorite tricks, as I've shown you in some other videos, is to match the black levels and the white levels of this screen to the rest of the shot. And that process is pretty simple. We'll just scroll down in our color corrector down to gain and lift. Lift is the darkest parts of the image and the gain is the brightest parts of the image. And really what we're looking for is what are the brightest parts of our real footage? How bright does this camera record stuff? If we mouse over right here in the windows where it's kind of blown out, this will tell us probably the brightest thing we could ever have. And by default, if we are kind of mousing over something, we can actually see the values of it, the RGB values right here in this bar. So I'm gonna mouse over something, mouse over this window right here, and you can see those color RGB values. So I'm gonna find something that's pretty white, something like this, and it's kind of coming in about 0.9611, one, one, something like that, so almost white. Might not be a bad idea to just take stuff down a little bit. We could look at our reflection here, it's 0.8, 0 0.95, 0 0.94, something like that. And that'll give us a pretty good just starting point for where to set our gain. So our gain, let's just start that out at 0.94. This is oversimplifying just a little bit, but it's gonna work great for just doing a basic match to our footage. So what we're doing now is making sure that the brightest part of this TV isn't brighter than the brightest part of the rest of our shot, because it's probably not unless this is like nighttime or something and the TV is the only light. So now we gotta do the same thing for the darkest parts. So I'm gonna look for something here in our shot that's really, really dark, like almost black. So we're gonna Mouse over stuff here and look at our RGB levels. Right now that is just about real black, but we also have a lot of 0 0.09, 0 0.08, something like that. We're also gonna look kind of around the TV and stuff. So it's a little bit noisy, but yeah, it's 0 0.1, 0 0.08, something like that. If we're at like 0 0.07, probably 0 0.08, that's probably gonna be good. So for our lift, we're gonna say 0 0.08 and that's gonna boost everything up. And the reason for that is because if we go to options here, Make sure we click on pre-divide most post multiply. Make sure that is checked because that's the weird stuff that happens. It'll brighten everything else, which is the opposite of what we want. 
So we'll make sure that this is checked and it will only color correct our screen here. This is already looking a lot more realistic. One thing also I just noticed is this little green reflection in the table, which we'll have to deal with maybe in another tutorial. But the composite works a little bit better now that we have this color correction. Here's before and here's after. Just makes it look a lot more realistic. The other good thing about doing this is that once we actually bring this into color and we adjust it here in the color page, that TV screen will actually act a lot more natural with the footage because it's been kind of matched to the brighter and darker colors. So if we make everything warm, it's gonna make this screen warm along with everything else. Whereas if we didn't color correct this beforehand, just go back to Fusion and turn off our color corrector, we can see it looks a little weird when we color correct everything and it doesn't quite fit with the rest of the footage like it did before. I'll just give a little bit of a wipe here. So we can kind of see the difference. It's a little bit subtle, might be kind of hard to see with YouTube compression and everything, but this is without the color corrector and this is with it. We might also realize that, man, this TV is a little bit too saturated. Again, we can go back to Fusion and take the saturation down in our color corrector to just kind of match the rest of the shot. And now we have this acting a lot more natural than before. So that's why we use the color corrector inside of Fusion versus just color in the color page. So I hope that clarifies things. If you want more videos on Fusion, we have a playlist going right here. All you have to do is click on it. You can automatically watch all the things. So many things. Lots. Duh. I like hanging out with you too.